Today we're going to be talking about night vision. And before we get into that, first of all, I want to thank Venturi Munitions. Big shout out to them for supplying the ammunition for a lot of our episodes. We really appreciate that. So let's break it yeah. down um, using night vision with rifles, with handguns. All right, so there's, there's multiple ways to use night vision. One is your standard where you just buy a monocular and you're holding it, which works great until you're actually trying to use it with a firearm. Um, in order to do that better, it's a whole lot... It's a whole lot easier if you have a hands-free device, correct? Correct. So um, here we've got a cry nightcap, um, and it allows us to mount our night vision system to our head so that anywhere our, our head is pointing, we can easily follow behind the night vision. Your, your basic night vision is going to start out, for any good quality, you're going to want something Gen 3 uh, most of the time. You can get away with some higher-end Gen 2s as long as you have extra illumination. Um, but my suggestion, if you're going to spend the money, there's a very little difference between the price of a higher end Gen 2 and a Gen 3 tube. Um, over 70% of your cost is going to be in the actual tube inside your night vision. Um, so I highly suggest starting with a Gen 3 tube and from a quality uh, source. What is, just so to recap, what's the difference? What is Gen 1? What is Gen 2? What is Gen 3? And before that, what is thermal and what is infrared? Touch so on that real quick. For Gen 1, that's like your old Russian surplus night vision. Gen 1's amplify just a tiny little bit. So typical night vision, you think it amplifies light. Gen 1 is just slightly better than using like a flashlight. There's a little bit of amplification, but not a whole lot. And you need a lot of infrared light to illuminate your target. The whole Bennett, the idea was like the star... Starlight. Starlight. Starlight, yeah. Starlight scope from World War II. Yeah. infrared lamp because that was Gen 1 or Gen 0. And it needed all that light, but you're invisible to your enemy who doesn't have night vision. And then Gen 2s were a little better. It has amplification, but typically you don't have the auto gain. Auto gating. Auto gating. Auto gating. Uh, so if you look at a bright light source, you could burn out your tube. Very easily. Very easily. With the Gen 3s, um, they have auto gating. I can look at a bright light very temporarily, not the sun, but like say the light that's shining on us now. It won't burn out my tube. It just sort of like does like a rapid shutter thing to preserve the tube inside. So it shuts off the actual electrical source inside your tube um, based on the amount of light that it's taking in because as it amplifies, it can tell how much light it's taking in. Um, this not only protects your, protects your nods, but there are tactical applications to this as well. So one good example is when I'm shooting with my PBS-14 and I'm shooting without a suppressor or anything that's, that mitigates the flash, the muzzle flash will actually dim, I can see it dim my PBS-14 just for a moment because it's, it's saving itself and then it goes back right again and I can see everything. As opposed to just losing that the second that flash goes off, right? Yeah. So what's the difference between infrared and thermal? So yeah. with, with thermal, in, in terms of weapon applications, right? Typically when you're using a night vision setup, you have an infrared laser and an infrared light. Thermal cannot see that wavelength. So if you get a thermal thing, oh great, I can use an infrared laser and aim with the thermal, it won't see it, it won't work. It only sees uh, in addition, yeah, thermals mainly focus more on your a animals or humans and that sort of nature, more of heat. It's all heat-based. It's not yeah. um, uh, the, one of the benefits with infrared is that, you know, you get outlines a lot better, for example. Another benefit to IR, like night vision versus thermal, thermal cannot see through glass. It'll just be a blank sheet. You will not be able to see through it. Night vision, you can. So if you can, if you can find a place and safely drive at night, you can actually drive with night vision on and not thermal. You will not be able to see through, through your windshield. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different applications. Um, if you're trying to ID something, if you're trying to see um, very particular and high resolution, you're normally going to be using standard night vision, right? Or an image intensifier tube or I squared, right? If you're actually going and you're trying to um, see a heat source, so you're trying to find a threat, you're trying to find an animal, um, that's when you would use your thermal. And then once you found the heat source, then you would go and you would pull up your I squared device and be able to identify the, the source better from there. At, at night, using this night, using any night vision device as a civilian, how do I hit a target at 100, 200 meters with an AR-15, something in 5.56? How do I make that happen? Go from not hitting it to hitting it in complete darkness. Answer that question. So let's look at our capabilities. From my experience, I have a hard time picking out steel targets at 200 yards. Just looking through this thing, it's hard because I'm trying to distinguish things. If I throw more light, more infrared light down range, then it helps. Or I aim a laser and let's say the steel is painted white, it'll reflect differently. And I see my, my laser brightens up. That's a little trick for me shooting at the range. Um, but in terms of trying to hit 
a live animal, it's going to be tough. You yeah. just don't have the, the magnification uh, to see that far. The benefit of having these devices, though, is, you know, under slow approach, you can go and you can make very little noise, and you are also able to see a whole lot better, most likely, than what you're sneaking up on. So you're able to get much closer and make positive ID before you actually pull the trigger. So let's talk about, you mentioned lasers. Mm -hmm. So, but that's only one method of utilizing this night vision with uh, a rifle. You can laser target and then you can calibrate it. Talk a little bit about that, but also talk a little bit about using your, your regular old sights. Talk about that. So when you're going, you're looking at lasers. Uh, you can use regular visible lasers. It will show up under night vision. Um, that is an option if you don't have a dedicated laser for, uh, for night vision use. However, night vision was designed around more stealthy alternatives, um, and so it primarily uses infrared lasers. These infrared lasers are great until you can't see, which is why they're also normally paired with an infrared illuminator. The illuminator allows you to be able to see a whole lot better what you're looking at, while the laser uh, pointer, essentially, is the aiming device that you use in order to put a fine point on whatever threat you're planning on engaging. Uh, going back to the laser and the night vision, at least with my night vision setup, um, there's a thing called blooming. Uh, when you throw a laser down range, there's so much light that you get this sort of halo effect around the point of the, the laser that sometimes at distance, it'll kind of obscure the target a little bit. And throwing more light with a good illuminator will actually help get rid of that halo effect and also help you ID the target. Um, another option is, so for handgun use, um, red dots help massively with, with um, night vision. You can actually bring up your handgun and either you can use night vision and look through a red dot setup. Um, now, you need to have a red dot that's night vision safe. Um, so real, real low setting, night vision will, will brighten it up and you can see it perfectly fine. Or you that's can do a sort of a tools. blend, mm -hmm. like when you shoot setup? normal right red dot, Probably. you keep both eyes open. You can do that trick with a, with a monocular, have the monocular on your left eye, if your right eye dominant, and you sight with the pistol with your right eye, and you can sort of, your brain sort of merges the two images together. So Some people superimpose the dot over what your brain is seeing with the left eye, so that it oh, acts good, as if you're, you're, uh, you're able to see with both eyes the red dot, even though the information is only coming through one eye. Yeah. Sometimes if you're only using the, the, the night vision to look through the optic in the handgun, sometimes the blooming effect will actually block a lot of the information and you won't be able to see downrange and see your target. A good portion of that uh, can be negated by changing the angle behind which you're, you're engaging from. If I'm a little bit higher above, um, I've noticed it does help reduce the blooming, but it still is existent. So dual binocular setup, you can use yeah. with, a, with a single tube, you can use night sights. Um, it's not preferred, but if you have your non-aided eye be your prime uh, primary uh, be your dominant eye for shooting. Um, you're able to see down your down your sights and see the illuminated dots with your non-aided eye, and then your aided eye is able to superimpose again, just like a red dot. Um, with dual tubes, it's a whole lot easier because you're able to just pull it up, and both eyes are seeing in the same light spectrum. So it's allowing everything to see just like you're shooting during the day with a red dot. That's why you know not only is a red dot good for shooting at longer engagements, it's also easier to s shoot at night with tubes. Another benefit to uh, dual tubes, not just for weapon manipulation, but spatial awareness. Um, if you close your one eye and try walking around, you sort of lose your spatial coordination a little bit. Um, some people say they have a hard time with monoculars. That's why they go with the dual tubes. I have not had that problem, but I don't spend a lot of time walking around the woods and bumping into things so much. Um, it's just for nighttime use, looking at stars and shooting at the range. But if you have to handle things and, and be in... Uh, close proximity, close proximity, proximity of things, um, then dual tubes help. So dual tubes are beneficial. While it is kind of a myth that they give you depth perception, it gives you more information. Um, and so giving more information through both eyes instead of just one will allow you to have a more natural um, method of movement. Um, so if you're going, you're trying to run through a shoot house, you go and you hit something, it's because you are closer to it than you really think you are. And it won't always help with that, but it is easier, especially when people begin to use two. If you go and you look at people who have gone through extensive training, you'll see the same people going at the same speed, whether it's single or dual, half the time. Uh, one downside to night vision, um, they typically have a very shallow depth of field, meaning you can focus downrange 
or you can dial on mine I can dial the, the objective lens and start focusing real close like on my hand right here but then everything else will be out of focus so I have to pick and choose between the two so one problem is if I'm focused down range and I'm shooting my target and all of a sudden I have a malfunction crap I cannot see my gun at all um, and that's why an admin light usually on a helmet or something helps because then you can administratively fix the problem or there's a, uh, a lens that Steiner makes that quick flips and refocuses but doesn't lose light uh, and helps you focus on things close up. Another option too, um, for, for those who either don't want to purchase a laser or if they're going to be planning on using this for a defensive use, it's always good to have a backup set of sights, correct? Um, so if you are planning on going and buying, um, buying a laser and you want to have a backup just in case your laser goes down, there are separate mounts that will work well uh, with certain red dots. Right, so in this case, um, I've got a T2 on a KAC skyscraper mount, um, and this allows me to easily get behind my red dot with my tubes on. So while under nods, I can go, and this is my normal shooting position, as I'm looking around with my goggles, I don't have to be up on my gun because I'm following my laser. When my laser goes down, all I have to do is get behind my red dot like this, and it's no different than shooting during the day. Obviously, you're still brought down, even with dual tubes, you only have about a 40 degree field of view, but your actual engagement with the dot is the same as during the day. That mount actually helps a lot. Um, when I try doing the same thing he's doing with my mount isn't tall enough, my PVS-14 starts hitting things on my gun. Um, so I either have to pull further away and bring the gun further away from my face or buy a tall mount. When it comes to shooting at night, shooting at low light conditions, there is a heightened level of awareness and of safety that you have to go through and you have to realize and you have to take into account when you work in those parameters. Um, things like marking the firing line with chem lights, things like pointing the firearm in a safe direction. All of a sudden at night, everywhere is dark all around you. You don't know where the safe direction is. You have to have to take those kinds of things into consideration and you have to realize that there is a higher element of risk when it comes to shooting at night. It's not something that you should be completely afraid of and you should run away from and that should deter you because we live 50% of our lives you know, in total darkness. But it's something you have to realize, okay, if I'm going to the range, I'm going to be shooting in a low light condition, um, there's some extra steps we have to take. Um, bring your equipment, stuff like that. Just give that a thought um, if you're getting into this sort of low light stuff. Thanks guys, really appreciate the viewership and we'll see you next time and I hope you learned a bit. Thank you very much Liddell and Nick for coming on the show today.